I'll take this as my basis of, uh, of uh, what I think is going on out there. And then if there's problems or things that I've seen over the you know, past weeks that I'm curious about, we're going to go and investigate and we're going to go and, and, and try and find those problems. You know, and OK, so there was a whore layer that was buried three weeks ago. I want to see how that's reacting now or a bunch of wind slab and alpine let's go find that and see you know and and obviously doing it in a safe manner but that's that's what it's all about it's really about finding the correlations between the weather patterns and you know what you're seeing on here and then putting it into practice and being you know creating a guideline of you know for myself okay this has happened i've got this amount of horror and there's you know it's been so cold here well now these are zones that i'm going to watch out for it we all do our part, Carl and Rob and Shelly as well. And, and it's just your due diligence, you know, it's being proactive enough, you know, and, and making note of problems that are out there, big significant changes that can affect the snowpack and what we're going to do and where we're going to go, you know, and keeping people safe as well. Sometimes that wind stuff feels like it's this deep. Yeah, it's hard snow up there, eh? Just the top is weird. No, for three meters, it's not as much covered as I thought it would be. It's from the wind. Like Shelly said, that upside down snowpack where it's that wind blown crust on top. It's not even really a crust, it's just density. Yeah, just dense, I guess. But it's got so much resistance, you know, to go through it with the snowmobile. But then underneath, it's just zero traction, like to claw on. Man, it's funny, right? riding sleds in the in the sense that it changes so much all the time even throughout the day you know the snow like what you can get away with in the morning for traction can be totally different in the afternoon you know and the, the wind effect and stuff that we're seeing so much of this year for sure is like that lots of push against it you know and, and it's all about trying to find routes around the wind drifts and being able to recognize where you know wind loading is going to happen as you're riding even and even for even in the gullies and things like that you know oh, like where it's those little deep. aspects that can slough off on you and you're stuck in the bottom yeah. like Danny was yeah <laughs> you know? little... like it's just so fat in the bottom and you're always trying to ride high on the walls because it's like you mini know, it'll train scoured out a little bit more and then but that snow is so loose underneath you're just sliding yeah. into it sliding yeah, sure. can't get any traction to yeah. climb you can out. almost see it like if you ride that air same area enough you can see like where it just looks like sand dunes you know and almost you can almost still see those ripples you know or like they come through and man you just avoid that yeah you can tell that it's it's lurking in there. Well, that's the other thing too, is with the crazy amounts of low density snow that we've got this year, the wind transport is that much greater. You know, you've got a higher water equivalent in your in your snow and it's less susceptible to that wind transport. Whereas, man, it's, so much of it this year has been just fluff, right? So yeah. it's really- We've had, yeah, because we've had a couple snowfalls that have been like, yeah. honestly, meter or meter 30 probably even. Yeah. Like even on some of these little shoulders, it was wailing. I'm sure up there, it's probably doing 90 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Yeah, it was giving her up there. Yeah, definitely pays to stick in the trees, you know, and and really stay on the ridge tops in this type of snow. Like, you know, for and avoid all those little tricky train traps if possible. Well, let's stay in the trees. And go home. And ride some pal home. <laughs> yeah.